Hey, what's up? People Piz out here. And today I want to talk to you about You Should Have Left. And You Should Have Left stars Kevin Bacon and Amanda Seyfried as a couple who've rented an upscale, very modern looking home in the Welsh countryside. However, there's more than meets the eye with this house. Now, You Should Have Left is written for the screen and directed by David Kep. Even though his name may not ring a bell, Kep has written some of Hollywood's biggest blockbusters and some pretty darn good movies. Jurassic Park, Panic Room, Carlito's Way, Mission Impossible, War of the Worlds, Spider-Man, and that's just to name a few. As a director, he helmed Stir of Echoes, a movie which also starred Kevin Bacon that I recall liking quite a bit. He also directed Secret Window with Johnny Depp, a movie that I remember thinking was... okay. In other words, Kep is a filmmaker with a lot of clout, who could seemingly get any project he wanted off the ground with no questions asked. And this has to be the case with You Should Have Left, because I can't imagine another scenario in which a movie like this gets made. You Should Have Left is also Bloomhouse's newest offering. Now, it wasn't all that long ago that Bloomhouse was being praised as the savior of the horror genre. Oh, how times have changed. Now, I want to get something off my chest straight out of the gate here. I hate dream within a dream sequences. I hate them with a passion. I cringe when I recognize that I'm watching a dream sequence in any movie out of fear of it turning into a dream within a dream sequence. You should have left opens with not just a dream within a dream sequence. Oh no, this movie ups the absurdity angle by presenting us with a dream within a dream that's actually taking place within a dream of an entirely different character. Let me break this down. One character is having a dream within a dream. It turns out that both of those dreams are transpiring within the dream of an entirely different character. I should have left, you should have left, right then and there. And as if that weren't bad enough, the movie actually spoils a big twist reveal that occurs toward the end of the film within one of these dream sequences. And it involves an entirely different pet peeve of mine. I won't go into any kind of specific details because it is a spoiler, even though the movie spoils itself within the first three minutes of its starting because A, this was just a bad idea, and B, because of some not-so-great makeup effects. The movie has literally just begun, and already I'm... So the movie revolves around this house that Bacon and Seyfried's characters have rented, and the house is really a character in and of itself. As a matter of fact, it's the most interesting character in the film. It's the only interesting character in this film. But after the third or so night in the house, it finally dawns on them that there's something just strange about it, and neither one of them lack being here. And finally, at this point, one of them asks the other, hey, why did you want to rent this house? To which the other replies, I thought you rented it. Well, no, I thought you rented it. I didn't rent it. I thought you rented it. Now, I know that some couples have difficulty communicating, but at no point in the packing process, in the process of driving to the airport, in the process of flying from the U.S. to Europe, in the process of driving from the airport all the way out to the Welsh countryside to this house, did either character ask the other, so hey, tell me about this house you've rented. They each received emails from the other saying, hey, I've rented this house for us. Here are the dates. And nothing more was spoke about it until three days in. There's a sequence on the first night in the house where Cyfrey and Bacon are about to turn in for the night. And we see, courtesy of an alarm clock beside the bed, that it's around 11 or so p.m. And Bacon is like, okay, I'm going to go downstairs and lock things up and turn out all the lights. So he goes about this journey through this maze-like house with these very long corridors with multiple rooms on either side of these halls. And in each room, there's literally half a dozen different light switches. 
and so many lights. This is the most well-lit, scary house I've ever seen. This house is so bright, you could see it from space. The electric bill has to be outrageous. So anyway, by the time Bacon returns from his long journey of turning out lights, we see now, courtesy of the alarm clock beside the bed, that it is 3 a.m. It has taken him four hours to turn off all the lights in this house. I laughed out loud. Now, yes, I know this is supposed to reveal that the house can manipulate time, but to me, this was a comedy sequence. You have Kevin Bacon wandering around this labyrinthian home, turning off all these light switches, commenting about the fact that there are so many freaking light switches in this house. He turns off one light, another light comes on. He turns off that light to see that there's yet another light on. Literally, this entire sequence is light switch, lights, light switch, lights, switch, lights, switch, lights, switch, lights. That is the entire sequence. Four hours. To me, that is funny. Another amusing sequence occurs when Kevin Bacon calls a local in the town near the house for help. He's pleading with this guy out of fear for not just his life, but for the life of his young daughter. And the local guy on the other end of the line basically says, sorry about your luck, see ya. Now the locals know about this house and they know that people go to this house and that some people never leave the house, but that's cold, man, ice cold. Bacon is pleading to this guy for help, not just for him, but for his little daughter. And the guy's just like, sorry, bruh, Sanford and Son is on later. This movie also has the strangest pacing. The first hour of this movie is spent establishing the characters, although it does a pretty horrible job at it because we literally know next to nothing about both Kevin Bacon and Amanda Seyfried's characters in this film. All we know about Kevin Bacon's character is that his last wife died under mysterious circumstances. Maybe it was an accident. Maybe it wasn't. That's it. Does the guy have a job? Does he have any hobbies? Does he have a favorite color? Who knows? Although, if he did, I would assume that it's blue because he does don a very stylish blue sweater in this film, very similar to the one that Mrs. Voorhees wore in Friday the 13th, which Kevin Bacon co-starred in. Coincidence? As for Amanda Seyfried's character, all we know about her is that she's an actress and she's on her phone a lot. But is it scary? No, not even a little. It's like they're not even trying to scare us. I don't even remember a cheap jump scare in this movie. This movie's idea of scares is having a shadow move in front of the camera. Yet another pet peeve of mine. The shadow moving in front of the camera gag is not scary. It's never been scary. It never will be scary. It's tired. Retire it. Just stop it. There's a sequence in You Should Have Left that perfectly sums up this movie. At one point, Bacon finally decides we need to get the heck out of this house. So he and his daughter set off on foot in the middle of the night to walk the four miles to the nearest town. Their little journey ends up right back where they started. Now, if you didn't see this outcome coming a mile away, you weren't paying attention. And honestly, at that point, I couldn't blame you if you weren't paying attention because I was struggling to. And the entire sequence is just a waste of time. You'll see everything coming from a mile away, and it's all just a big waste of time. If I had to say one nice thing about this movie, it would be that the performances are okay. So yeah, you should skip, you should have left, 
which I should have left right after that uh, dream within a dream within a dream sequence. But um, yeah, it's too late for me, but save yourself. Avoid. You should have left. If you've seen You Should Have Left, please let me know your thoughts on the film down in the comments section below. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care, and until next time, peace. A big thank you to all my awesome Patreon supporters. I appreciate your generosity and support of my channel. Become a patron today and join me for monthly live streams and have a say in what movies I review on my channel patreon.com forward slash pizal or follow the link in the description. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.